evening. As you can see, I'm reporting from the office today. So, really nice day. Went to Bridgend Princess of Wales Hospital with the PEDS team. Uh, managed to catch up with some old friends because I did my first placement there as well, so it was really nice to see uh, some of the dietitians there, see how everything's getting on. It sounds like not a lot has changed. I know Bridgend was uh, really struggling with lockdown and they had uh, quite a lot of COVID patients wards closing so the dietetics department was changing quite a lot and know some people are working down in the field hospital which is where I, I think I've mentioned before the c patients who've had COVID are being sent there then so they're off-site for their recovery. Anyway uh, so today I attended a celiac clinic uh, interesting setup, so due to social distancing and there being two of us, two students, the first half was done remotely, so I watched uh, through a web link um, and they had uh, an iPad in the consultation room. Uh, it did work, you know, it was just useful to see. And then for the second half, I attended in person, um, saw three patients and their parents came in as well. It was a good range of ages. Uh, we had some who'd been diagnosed for quite a while and they were just looking for advice to make sure everything was spot on. Uh, in particular with celiac disease, same as adults as it is in kids, looking at iron levels and calcium levels, uh, which are just you know, particularly important nutrients that can be easily malabsorbed, I think that's the right term, if the gut lining isn't, uh, isn't healthy, which celiac can obviously cause damage to that. Um, we also had one that was a very recent diagnosis for both patient and parent. Uh, which turns out is more common than you might imagine because celiac tends to run in families so like a, a lot of other conditions like type 1 diabetes uh, and they're also associated as well it turns out so you know I, I, I would have guessed if more than one person in a family's got it it does make it a little bit easier because they've got someone to talk to about the condition and they can sympathize with each other and also just in terms of cooking then as well so it's not just one person I think you know, two people in a family, in my opinion, you, you might as well all try and follow it. It's easier just to take gluten out of the house then. I don't know if that would be best practice, but it's it's my thoughts. And I uh, can imagine, you know, if, if my partner or my daughter had it, it, it would just be easier because then you're not having that other person watch other people eat foods that they can't. It would make it a bit easier. But, you know, everyone's different and they have their own way of managing it. So... That was a really enjoyable clinic. Uh, had a good chat with one of the mothers in particular. Uh, she was very proactive about her daughter's health. So it was nice to kind of ask broader questions as well. But one of the things I did have to keep in mind is because this was a an MDT clinic, so it was both the paediatric dietitian and one of the gastro consultants, you have to be respectful of you know each specialist's time. So there are specific things to be covered in an MDT. It's not a open session for one of the specialities to really knuckle down and get all of the facts they can then be referred back to a, an individual session with them so i think that was the plan with a number of the patients there um this evening just got back from a, a walk with loki it's quite wet out uh, i've got someone singing downstairs i don't know if you can hear them <laughs> in a very good mood had um the in-laws come and visit today, so that was nice. We've not seen them for a while. Uh, it's uh, a special allowance because we've got the young one, uh, so give give Bryony a bit of an easier time. And I have done my weekly end of week reflection. So that was a little bit tougher this week because we've not had as much patient interaction, you know, especially in the third placement room, a bit more used to actually conducting assessments independently ourselves and a lot of the reflections based on our our progress index that's a big part of the job so to kind of think a little bit more broadly but it did make me realize how much I like peds I, I didn't didn't expect to like this speciality as much um, I had a understanding of it from the first placement and I think that's why I was most surprised I, I think perhaps one of the reasons for me why I was more nervous doing pediatric assessments especially working in the ambulance service, uh, not all of the time, but a lot of the time when we go out to quite young children, they, they can potentially be quite poorly and it's a lot more difficult because they can't tell you, they can't communicate how they're feeling. And one of the things we're taught as well is that 
children are very good at like compensating medically so they may seem fine and continue to seem fine for quite a while and then all of a sudden they can you know they can dip quite suddenly whereas with adults you know you tend to feel rough for a while and I think it's a slow gradual decline so obviously it's a, it's a very different world um, but that was some some nervousness I had brought to the uh, the speciality but I you know kind of left that behind now realized that I think pediatric dietitians can make a huge difference they're really involved in the care and the treatment and the interventions are often very heavily diet focused so it's nice to see that you can make such a big difference and you know yes you do come across some some very upsetting cases like I did yesterday and things can be difficult as well obviously there's you know a lot of emotional issues and families can get upset but I feel like that's something I'd enjoy trying to deal with where you know trying to help people uh, get past these issues working together and also just the interaction as well with the the, the multi multidisciplinary team MDT I'm trying not to use acronyms because it's uh, easy for people to come across videos and not you know not understand stuff so barriers to entry is very important to me so yeah uh, a good week um, we were told by one of the dietitians this week as well that we're more than welcome if we'd like some further kind of ad hoc experience you know or we want to follow up on cases more than I can more than welcome to message and that's kind of my understanding as well is for uh, the team members we spoke to who've gone into paediatrics you don't tend to get a lot of direct teaching and placement experience on it so it's something you have to pursue yourself a little bit more so yeah watch this space I guess I guess uh, so next week in Royal Glamorgan Hospital so we're on the wards I've not had much ward experience for quite a while so looking forward to it I, I've definitely from my reflection notice I've made progress and I feel confident in a lot more areas so I'm hoping to kind of see that in practice uh, next week and I'm with one of the other students as well so that's that makes a big difference as I said before that's really nice so yeah uh, weekend got a bit of housework to do but gonna try and keep it chilled and there's an assignment to crack on with anyway um, so I'm sure I'll try and get a good majority of that done and feel like it's been a nice uh, proactive weekend so I shall see you next week on Monday thanks